in all places and fill all things, treasury of blessings and giver of life, come and dwell within us and cleanse us from every blemish and save our souls, O blessed one. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill among men. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill among men. O Lord, you shall open my lips. My mouth will show forth your praise. Blessed is the kingdom of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, always, now, and ever, and forever. In peace let us pray to the Lord. For the peace that comes from heaven above, and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. For peace throughout the whole world, for the welfare of the holy churches of God, and for the union of them all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy church, and for those who enter it with faith, devoutness, and the fear of God, let us pray to the Lord. For our holy ecumenical patriarch Bartholomew, the Archbishop of Constantinople, let us pray to the Lord. For our most reverend Metropolitan Gregory, for our esteemed priesthood, for the diaconate in Christ, for all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. For the honorable government of our country and all civil authorities, and for our armed forces, let us pray to the Lord. For this city and for every city, village and country, and for those who with faith dwell in them, let us pray to the Lord. For healthful seasons, for an abundance of the fruits of the earth, and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. For those who travel by land, by sea, and by air, for the sick, the suffering, and for those who are held in captivity, and for their safety and salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, and want, let us pray to the Lord. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Commemorating our ever holy, ever pure, ever blessed, and glorious Lady, the birth giver of God and ever Virgin Mary, together with all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. For to you are due all glory, honor, and adoration to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. Amen. Lord our God, whose mighty is beyond description, whose glory surpasses all understanding, whose mercy is without limit, whose love for mankind is beyond expression. Oh, Master, your kindness look down upon us in this holy church, and we still upon us in this praying with us your abundant mercies and compassion. O Lord, save your people and bless your inheritance. Preserve the fullness of your church. Sanctify those who love the beauty of your house. Glorify them by your divine might and forsake us not to put our hope in you. For yours is the might and yours are the kingdom and the power and the glory of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Now endeavor it unto the ages of ages. Amen. 
O Lord, you have permitted this community to pray together in harmony. You promised that you would grant the request of two or three gathered in your name. Please fulfill all those petitions of your servants that are beneficial to them, giving us in this world the knowledge of your truth and life eternal in the world to come. For you, O God, are gracious, and you love mankind, and to you we render glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Giving wisdom and understanding to him who asks, 
and not neglecting the sinner, but prescribing penance for his salvation. Grant to us, your humble and unworthy servants, even at the moment, to stand before the glory of your holy altar and offer you to worship and glory. O Master, accept from the lips of us sinners the thrice holy hymn and visit your goodness. Forgive us all our sins, both voluntary and involuntary. Sanctify our souls and bodies, and grant that we may serve your holiness all the days of our life. For the prayers of the birth giver, God, and of all the saints who have pleased you from the beginning of time.
reading is from the epistle of St. Paul to the Hebrews. Brethren, by faith Moses, when he had grown up, refused to be known as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He wished to be ill-treated along with God's people, rather than enjoy the fleeting rewards of sin. Moses considered the reproach borne by God's anointed greater riches than the treasures of Egypt, for he was looking for to the reward. What more shall I recount? I have no time to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, of David and Samuel and the prophets, who by faith conquered kingdoms, did what was just, obtained the promises, they broke the jaws of lions, put out raging fires, escaped the devouring sword, though weak they were made powerful, became strong in battle, and turned back foreign invaders. Women received back their dead through resurrection. Others were tortured and would not receive deliverance in order to obtain a better resurrection. Still others endured mockery, scourging, even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned, sawed in two, put to death at sword's points, they went about garbed in the skins of sheep or goats, needy, afflicted, tormented. The world was not worthy of them. They wandered about in deserts and on mountains. They dwelt in caves and in holes of the earth. Yet despite the fact that all of these were approved because of their faith, they did not obtain what, was prom what had been promised. God had made a better plan, a plan which included us. Without us, they were not to be made perfect. Therefore, since we, since we for our part are surrounded by this cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every encumber encumbrance of sin which clings to us and persevere in running the race which lies ahead. Let us keep our eyes fixed on Jesus, who inspires and perfects our faith. Peace be with you, reader, it is wisdom. Be attentive. Wisdom, let us be attentive as we listen to the Holy Gospel. Peace be unto all. of the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Let us be attentive. At that time, Jesus decided to go to Galilee, and he found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter, Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, son of Joseph. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him and said of him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom is no guile. Nathanael said to Jesus, How do you know me? Jesus answered him before Philip called you. When you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Nathanael answered him, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. 
Jesus answered him, Because I said to you, I saw you under the fig tree. Do you believe? You shall see greater things than these. And he said to him, Truly I say to you, you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ is among us. This morning, we hear St. John's Gospel account of the calling of the Apostle Nathanael. Jesus sees Nathanael from afar, sitting under a fig tree. Nathanael's friend Philip, who just one day earlier began following Jesus, said to his friend, We have found the one the one of whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote about, Jesus, Jesus of Nazareth. Now Philip, knowing the law of Moses very well, knew that the Messiah was not to come from the city of Nazareth, but from the city of Bethlehem in Judea. So Nathanael asks, can anything good come out of Nazareth? And Philip answered by saying what we Orthodox Christians to this very day say to those who are searching for the true faith, come and see, come and see. And as they walked toward Jesus, Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him and said, behold, an Israelite indeed in whom is no guile, no deceit. And Nathanael asked, well, how do you know me? And Jesus said, before Philip called you, I saw you under the fig tree. One's mind should go back to the Garden of Eden where Adam and Eve were hiding from God under the fig tree. Do you see how the Lord knows everything about us with just a simple glance? He knows our thoughts. He knows our weaknesses, our sins, and our virtues as well. Nathaniel immediately knows who Jesus Christ is as soon as he saw and spoke with him saying, you are the son of God, you are the king of Israel. Nathaniel did not need to see any miracles. He believed simply by looking at Jesus Christ. Now, on the other hand, the Sadducees and the Pharisees, also knowing the law and the prophets very well, could not believe that Jesus was the Son of God. They saw also countless miracles, but they dismissed each miracle, claiming it to be an act of the devil. Each person healed, each blind person who received back their sight, every deaf and dumb person, they thought, all were faking it. They were simply lazy and beggars. They could not see what Christ did. What is the great difference between the two of them? One seeing and not one not seeing? Nathaniel had no guile in his heart. He was a good man, an honest man, seeking to know God, the true God. The Pharisees were deceitful, politicians, lying, jealous, prideful, all things that keeps one from seeing God. What keeps us from seeing God? Sin. This first Sunday of Lent is also known as the triumph of orthodoxy. It originated in the 8th century and commemorates the restoration of icons to their proper place in the church. The iconoclasts, 
Those who opposed icons and wanted them out could not see the Son of God in an icon. They could not see any holiness in an icon. To them, the veneration of an icon was idol worship. So with the help of political leaders, they began forcefully removing icons from the church. It was a sad part of the history of our church. Can you imagine coming into church and not seeing the beautiful icons all around? An icon is a window into heaven. Unlike stained glass windows, which need light from outside in order to be seen, so if you come at nighttime, you can't see a stained glass window. The source of light in an icon comes from within the icon itself, within the holiness of the person that is depicted on the icon themselves. When one venerates an icon, we venerate, the veneration passes through the image painted on the wood to, to the person depicted by it. The very proper way to come into the Orthodox Church is to approach the icon on the sacramental table and venerate it, and then return to your pew where you are sitting. Even if you arrive late, you should come still and venerate the icon before you sit. I understand no one wants to be made a spectacle of, but it is very proper and the right way to enter a church. Historically, the main culprits of the iconoclast movement were rich and powerful Hebrew men. They were against Christianity in general and despised any worship of Jesus Christ and his saints whatsoever. And the church argued that since God the Son became incarnate by the Virgin Mary, one could now depict Jesus Christ and venerate icons which depict him and his saints. We've seen him. He was a man. He was the Son of God. And now we can depict and venerate him. The church finally won and the Empress Theodora and her son declared and restored icons to their proper place in the church. Do you know there are still iconoclasts in today's society? There are even some so-called Christian denominations who teach their congregation not to enter an Orthodox church because we worship icons of Jesus Christ and his saints. To this very day, churches forbid icons in their church, some Christians. These also, like the original iconoclasts, cannot see the real Jesus Christ in an icon. Jesus himself said that the lamp of the body is the eye. In other words, our eyes see and enlighten the heart. Nathaniel saw God, Jesus, and immediately knew. The Pharisees saw also, but the evil in their eye would not let them see the light of Christ. Remove that guile from your heart. Replace it with good. And we also will be able to see more than just painted wood. We will see Jesus Christ, Son of God, and his saints, and venerate their most pure image in God's heavenly kingdom. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Christ is among us. Let us all say with our whole soul and with our whole mind, let us say, O oh Lord, almighty God of our fathers, we pray to you, hear us and have mercy. Have mercy on us, O God, according to your great mercy, we pray to you, hear us and have mercy. Furthermore, we pray for our holy ecumenical patriarch, 
Bartholomew, the Archbishop of Constantinople, and for our most reverend Metropolitan Gregory, for our spiritual fathers and all other clergy, and for all our brethren in Christ, for their welfare, peace, health, salvation, and for the remission of their sins, and that the Lord our God may prompt and help them in all things. Furthermore, we pray for those who give their offerings and do good works in this holy and venerable church, for those who labor in its service, for those who sing, and for all the people here present to await your great and abundant mercy, for those who have shown us kindness, and for all Orthodox Christians. You are a merciful God who loves mankind, and we give glory to you, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, always, now, and ever, and forever. love for mankind, though in nature unchanged and unchangeable, you became both a man and our high priest and his master of all, conferred upon us the sacred power of offering this liturgical and bloodless sacrifice. For you alone, our Lord, our God, will over all things in heaven and earth, and the born of the throne of the cherubim, the Lord of the seraphim, and the King of Israel, who alone are holy and abide his saints, do I pray to you, who alone are gracious and ready to hear me, look favorably upon your sinful and unworthy servant, and cleanse my soul from all other people. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, enable me and clothed with the grace of the priesthood to stand before you, holy altar, and offer this sacrifice in which your body and precious Blood. I come to you with my head bowed low and implore you, do not your face away from me, nor exclude me from among your children, but allow these gifts to be offered to you by me, your sinful and mother's servant, for you, a praise your offer and offer, receive them, I'll receive them, give glory to you and to your eternal Father, in your life giving spirit, and I'll endeavor it unto the ages of the mercy of me, O God, according to your abundant mercy and blood of
we who mystically represent the cherubim and have seen to the life-giving trinity the thrice holy him, let us now lay aside our earthly cares, and we may raise on high the King of all who comes invisibly escorted by angelic hosts. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. We who mystically represent the cherubim and have seen to the life-giving trinity the thrice holy him, let us now lay aside our earthly cares, and we may raise on high the King of all who comes invisibly escorted by angelic hosts. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. God, be merciful to me. Sackmar, John M. Barley, Michael A. Zvonik, Emily Sprintz, Amanda Love, and Elizabeth Grace Seitz. For the servants of God, those who are joining us via the internet for their health and long life. For the departed servants of God, John Chupka Sr., Nicholas, Don, and John P. Chupka, and Joseph Quinn, Margaret Herco, and newly departed servants of God, Alfred Novak and Cecilia Gresh Schumann, for their blessed repose and all you Orthodox Christians, always, now, and ever, and forever. Wrapped in a clean sweat and learning her previous places and laid it in a new tomb. God Almighty, Lord, we see the sun. I pray to the call upon you with all our hearts, that the poor listeners also bring us through your holy altar, and bless all your gifts and spiritual sacrifices for our sins, for the transgressions of your people. Bless us also the glory find faith in your sight, that our sacrifice may be pleasing to you. May good spirit of grace rest upon us and upon these gifts, lying to the courts upon all your people. of your only begotten Son, with whom you are blessed, together with your all holy, gracious, and life-giving Spirit, now and ever and forever. be attentive.
Let us stand aright, let us stand with fear, let us be attentive, so that we may offer the holy sacrifice in peace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Let us lift up our exalt you, praise you, bless you, worship you, give thanks to you, and glorify you, the God who alone exists, and that we should offer to you this our spiritual worship with a contrite heart and humble spirit, for you it is you who have graciously bestowed upon us the knowledge of your truth, who can speak of your mighty words and make all your praises heard, who can tell of your miracles at all times. O Master of all, Lord of heaven and earth, and of all created beings, both visible and visible, you sit on the throne of glory and look upon the depths. You are invisible, unknowable, indescribable, without beginning and without change. The Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, our great God and Savior. He is our hope, the image of your goodness, the seal of your likeness, who reveals you, the Father, in himself. He is the living word, true God, wisdom that existed before time began. Life, sanctification, power, the true light, to whom also the Holy Spirit was revealed. The Spirit is the spirit of truth, the gift of filial adoption, the pledge of an inheritance to come, the beginning of eternal good things, the life-giving power and fountain of holiness, to whom every rational and intelligent creature is given the power to worship you and to send up to you unending glory. For all things are your servants, the angels, archangels, thrones, dominions, principalities, authorities, powers, and the many I cherub and praise you. Standing circle before you are the seraphim, each having six wings. With two wings they cover their faces, with two their feet, and with two they fly, as they call to one another with unceasing and incessant hymns of praise, as they sing, uh, cry out, and proclaim the triumphant hymn, saying, With these blessed powers, O Lord, O Master and Lover of mankind, we sinners also cry out and say, Holy are you, truly all holy. There is no limit to the majesty of your holiness. You are revered in all your works, for in righteousness and true judgment you have ordered all things for us. When you created man and had fashioned him from the dust of the earth and had honored him with your own image, O God, you set him in the midst of a bountiful paradise, promising him life eternal and the enjoyment of everlasting good things by keeping your commandments. But when he disobeyed you, the true God who had created him, he was led astray by the deceit of the serpent, who was made subject to death with his own transgressions. In your righteous judgment, O God, you exiled him from paradise into this world and returned him to the earth from which he had been taken. But you provided for him the salvation of rebirth, rebirth which is in your Christ himself. For you did not turn yourself away forever from your creation, whom you had made a good one, nor did you forget the ways and works of your hands, but you visited him in different ways. And through, the, through the tender compassion of your mercies, you sent forth prophets who performed great works by your saints, who in every generation were well pleasing to you. You spoke to us through the mouths of your servants, the prophets who foretold to us the salvation which was to come. You gave us the law to aid us. You appointed angels to guard us. And when the fullness of time had come, you spoke to us through your Son himself, through whom you had created time, being the brightness of your glory and the stamp of your person, and upholding all things by the power of your word. Your Son did not think of equality with you, who alone are God and Father, as something to be grasped. And so, although he was God before time began, he appeared on earth and dwelt among us. He was incarnate of a holy virgin and emptied himself, taking on the form of a servant and being, co being conformed to the body of our lowliness so that he might conform us to the image of his glory. 
since sin entered the world through a man and death through sin. So your only begotten son, who is in your bosom, our God and Father, was well pleased to be born of a, vir of a woman, the holy birth giver of God and ever virgin Mary. He was born under the law so that he might condemn sin in his own flesh, so that those who died in Adam might be made alive in him, your Christ. He lived in this world and gave us commandments for salvation. He released us from the illusions of thy idolatry and brought us to the knowledge of you, true God and Father. He procured us for himself a chosen people, a royal priesthood and a holy nation. Having purified us with water, he sanctified us with the Holy Spirit. He gave himself as a ransom to death by which we were held captive, having been sold into slavery by sin. He descended into the realm of death through the cross that he might fill all things with himself. He loosed, the, he, loosed, he loosed the sorrow of death and rose again from the dead on the third day, for it was not possible that the author of life should be conquered by corruption. In this way he made a way to the resurrection of the dead for all flesh. Thus he became the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep, the firstborn of the dead, that he might be first in all ways among all things. Ascending into heaven, he sat at the right hand of your majesty on high, and he shall come again to reward each person according to his deeds. He left us memorials of his saving passion, these which we have set forth according to his command. For when he was about to go to his voluntary and ever memorable and life-giving death, on the, on the night on when, he was, when he gave himself for the life of the world, he took bread into his holy and most pure hands, and he presented it to you, God and Father, and he gave thanks and blessed it and sanctified it and broke it. And he gave it to his holy disciples and apostles, saying, Take and eat, this is my body which is broken for you, for the remission of sins. Divine and mixed it, he gave thanks and blessed it. And he gave it to his holy disciples and apostles, saying, All of you drink of this. This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim my death and confess my resurrection. Therefore, Master, remembering his redeeming passion, his life-giving cross, his three-day burial, his resurrection from the dead, his ascension into heaven, is sitting at your right hand, God and Father, in his glorious and awesome second coming, and offering to you yours of your own in behalf of all and for all. Master, since you have enabled us, your sinful and unworthy servants, to minister at your holy altar, not through our own righteousness, for we have done nothing good upon the earth, but because of your mercies and bounties, which you have richly poured out upon us, we now have the courage to draw near to your, this, your holy altar, presenting to you the antitypes of the sacred body and blood of your Christ. We pray and beseech you, O Holy of Holies, that by the power of your goodness, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts lying here before you and bless and sanctify them and reveal this bread to be the precious body of our Lord and God and Savior Jesus Christ and that which is in this cup to be the precious blood of our Lord and God and Savior Jesus Christ poured forth for the life of the world. Amen. Changing them by your Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Unite all of us who partake of this one bread and cup to one another in the communion of the one holy, one, one holy body and blood of your Christ for judgment or condemnation. Rather, grant that we may find mercy and grace together with all the saints that have been pleasing to you throughout all time. With our forefathers, fathers, patriarchs, prophets, apostles, preachers, evangelists, martyrs, confessors, ascetics, teachers, and all the righteous made perfect in the faith. Especially for our ever holy, ever pure, ever blessed and glorious Lady, the birth giver of God and ever Virgin Mary. With the Holy Prophet. 
forerunner and that is John, the holy, glorious, and praiseworthy apostles, and of all the saints who who prayers visit us, O God. Remember also, Lord, the Lord, this Lord, those who have fallen asleep in the resurrection into eternal life. Lord God, we pray for the forgiveness and the repose of the souls of the departed servants, Metropolitan Nicholas, Helen and Joseph, Catherine and John, Sister Nifidor and Susan, and newly departed Alfred, and grant in a place of light where there's no sun nor morning, grant the light where the light of your face shines. Furthermore, we entreat you, O Lord, remember your one, O Lord, your holy Catholic and Apple Church, which is from one end of the universe to the other. Give peace to her, and you have obtained with the precious blood of your Christ, and preserve this holy house until the end of your world. Remember, O Lord, those who offer you these gifts, and those for whom and, and through whom they were offered, and, intent, and the intentions which they were offered. Remember, O Lord, those who bring offerings of good worship of your church, and those who remind and who those who remember the poor. Reward them with your rich and heavenly gifts, with their earthly, temporal, and corruptible gifts. Grant them your heavenly ones, which are eternal and incorruptible. Remember, Lord, those who are the deserts, the mountains, the caverns, the pits of the earth. Remember, Lord, those who live in chastity and godliness, in austerity and holiness. Remember, Lord, this nation and her civil authorities, those who serve in the government and the armed forces. Grant them a secure and lasting peace. Speak good things in their hearts concerning your church and lead all your people so that we in their tranquility may lead a calm and peaceful life in all godliness and sanctity. In your goodness, guard those who are good. In your loving kindness, make those who are evil good. Remember, O Lord, the people here present as well as those who are absent for honorable reasons. Have mercy on them and on us according to the multitude of your mercies. Fill their cupboards with every good thing. Preserve their marriages in peace and harmony. Raise the infants, guide the young, support the aged, encourage the faint-hearted, reunite the separated, lead back those who are in error, and join them to your holy Catholic and apostolic church. Free those who are held captive by, your, by unclean spirits. Sail with those upon the seas. Travel with those who travel by land and air. Defend the widows. Protect the orphans. Free the captives and heal the sick. Remember, O oh God, those who are being judged, those who are in prison, in exile, in hard labor, and those in any kind of affliction, necessity, or distress. Remember, O oh Lord our God, all those who entreat your great loving kindness, and those who love us, and those who hate us, and those who have asked us to pray for them, unworthy though we be. Remember all your people, O Lord our God, pour out your rich mercy upon all of them, granting them all the petitions which are for their salvation. You yourself remember, O God, o, though all those whom we have not remembered through ignorance, forgetfulness, or the multitude of names, since you know the name and age of each according to it from his mother's womb. You, O Lord, are the help of the helpless, the hope of the hopeless, the savior of the bestorm, the haven of the voyager, the physician of the sick, be all things to all mankind, for you know everyone and to request, every home and their need in its needs. Deliver this city, O Lord, and every city and countryside from famine, plague, earthquake, flood, fire, sword, foreign invasion, and civil war. Remember among the first, O Lord, our holy ecumenical patriarch, Bartholomew, the Archbishop of Constantinople, and our most reverend Metropolitan Gregory. Preserve them for your holy churches in peace and safety and honor and in health for many years so that they may faithfully dispense the word of your truth. Remember, O Lord, your servants of God, grant them salvation, visitation, and forgiveness of their sins. Remember, O Lord, every orthodox hierarch who rightly dispenses the word of your truth. Remember, O Lord, according to the multitude of your mercies, my own unworthiness. Pardon my every offense, both voluntary and involuntary, and do not withhold the grace of your Holy Spirit from these gifts here set forth because of my sins. Remember, O Lord, the priesthood, the diaconate in Christ, and every clerical order. Let none of us who stand about your holy altar be put to shame. Visit us with your loving kindness, O Lord. Manifest yourself to us for your rich compassions. Grant seasonable and, un and, and healthful weather. Send, gen send gentle showers upon the earth so that it may bear fruit. Bless the crown of the year in your, with your loving kindness. Stop schisms among the churches. Pacify the ragings of the pagans. And quickly destroy the uprisings of heresy by the power of your Holy Spirit. Receive us all into your kingdom, showing us to be children of the light and children of the day. Grant us your peace and love, O Lord our God, for you have given all things to us. And grant that with one voice and one heart we may glorify and praise your most honorable and sublime name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. May the mercies of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ be with all of you.
having commemorated all the saints again and again in peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the precious gifts which have been offered and sanctified, let us pray to the Lord. That our God who loves mankind, having received them on his holy, most heavenly and mystical altar, as an aroma of spiritual fragrance may bestow upon us in return divine grace and the gift of the Holy Spirit, let us pray. For our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, and want, let us pray to the Lord. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. For a day that in all things will be perfect, holy, peaceful, and without sin, let us beseech the Lord. For an angel of peace, a faithful guide, a guardian of our souls and bodies, let us beseech the Lord. For the pardon and remission of our sins and transgressions, let us beseech the Lord. For all that is good and profitable to our souls and for the peace of the world, let us beseech the Lord. That we may pass the remainder of our life in peace and repentance, let us beseech the Lord. For a Christian ending of our life without pain and shame, peaceful and for a good account at the fearful judgment seat of Christ, let us beseech the Lord. Having prayed for the unity of faith and the communion of the Holy Spirit, let us commend ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. Yes, O oh God, do not allow any of us to be guilty of partaking unworthily of your awesome and heavenly mysteries, lest we become sick in body and soul. Rather, enable us even unto our last breath to worthily receive a portion of your holy things as a, sustain, a sustenance on the road that leads to eternal life and as an acceptable defense of the dread judgment seat of your Christ. Thus, we, may we also, together with all the saints who throughout all time have been acceptable to you, be partakers of your everlasting good things which you have prepared for those who love you, O Lord. And make us worthy, O Lord, with full confidence and without condemnation, to dare to call upon you, God our Heavenly Father, and to say to you, the sacred and spiritual altar, where they appear conscious for the forgiveness of sins, for the pardon of transgressions, for the communion of the Holy Spirit, the inheritance of the kingdom of heaven, for confidence in approaching you, and not for judgment. is the kingdom and the power and the glory of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, always, now, and ever, and forever. sanctify, guard, strengthen, and fortify those who bow their heads to you, that withdraw them from every evil work, unite them to every good work, graciously grant that they may partake of your pure and life-giving mysteries without condemnation for the, re for the remission of their sins and for the communion of the Holy Spirit. Through the grace and bounties and love towards mankind of your only begotten Son with whom you are blessed, 
together with your all-holy, gracious and life-giving spirit, now and ever and forever. merciful to me, a sinner. God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Oh, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Be attentive. Holy things are for the holy. of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I believe, O Lord, and confess that you are truly the Christ, Son of the living God, who came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the first. O Son of God, accept me today as a communicant of your mystical supper. I will not speak of this mystery to your enemies, nor like Judas will I give you a kiss, but like the penitent thief, I confess to you. O Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. O Master, remember me when you come into your kingdom. O Holy One, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Let the partaking of your holy mysteries, O Lord, be not for my judgment nor condemnation, but for the healing of my soul and my body. O Lord, I also believe and confess that this which I am about to receive is truly your most precious body, and truly your life-giving blood, which I pray I may worthily receive for the remission of all of my sins and for life everlasting. O God, be merciful to me, a sinner. O God, cleanse me of my sins and have mercy on me. O Lord, forgive me, for my sins are many. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Forgive me if I have sinned against you in any way, either thought, whether voluntary or involuntary. Forgive me if I have sinned against you in any way, either thought, whether voluntary or involuntary. The precious and all holy, all pure body of our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, given to me, Robert Anthony, and a worthy priest, for the remission of all my sins and for life everlasting. Amen.
Behold, this has touched your lips and shall take away your iniquities and shall cleanse you of all of your sins. O God, save your people and bless your inheritance. Blessed is our God. Always, now, and ever, and forever. Receive the divine, holy, most pure, immortal, heavenly, and life creating awesome mysteries of Christ. Arise, let us worthily give thanks to the Lord. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Having prayed that this day will be perfect, holy, peaceful, and without sin. Let us commend ourselves in one another and our whole life to Christ our God. We give you thanks, O Lord our God, for letting us share in these holy mysteries which you have given us for the benefit, sanctification, and healing of our souls and bodies. Let them provide us with a faith that cannot be shaken, with love that does not pretend, with wisdom that is complete, with a cure for our, all our spiritual and bodily ills, with a defense against every adversary, and with a willingness to observe all that you have taught us, and finally with the right answer at the judgment seat of your Christ. For you are our sanctification, and to you we give glory, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. Depart in peace. Let us pray to the Lord. We thank you, O Lord Jesus Christ, for you have led us to this present time of fasting towards salvation. We thank you, for you have arranged to heal the great wounds of our souls in this short time and to effect the rejection of our many sins. Good Master, we pray you. Remove us from, from, from fair. 
pharisaical hypocrisy and fasting and banish all false sadness. Drive from us pride in our self-moderation and self-denial in deed, word, or thought. Fill us with the light, with light and truth as you prescribe. Strengthen us in the struggle against passions and in the war against sin. Through alienation from passions, prepare us to follow you. By fasting, you have shown us the way to victory over the devil and how to partake in your death and resurrection and to rejoice in eternal joy, which you have prepared for those who hunger and thirst for your righteousness. You are the God of mercy and glory is due to you, together with the Father and your all-holy, good, and life creating spirit, now and ever and forever. The mysteries of your divine dispensation have been completed and perfected to the best of our ability. We will praise the Lord. We have seen the commemorate. We have commemorated your death. We have seen the likeness of your resurrection. And we have been filled with never-ending life and, and have enjoyed the inexhaustible delights we made you. Christ on us worthy of this and the age to come as well. May the blessing of the Lord be upon you through his grace and love for mankind, always, now, and ever, and forever. Christ, our true God, risen from the dead, through the prayers of his most pure mother, through the prayers of a holy father among the saints, base of the great Archbishop of Cappadocia and Caesarea, and through the prayers of all the saints, have mercy on us and save us, for he is gracious and he loves mankind. Amen. Have a seat a moment, please. Birthday greetings are extended this week to Elijah Stakmar. Happy birthday, Eli to John M. Barley, to Michael A. Zvonik. Happy birthday, Michael. Uh, Emily Sprintz, Amanda Love, and Elizabeth Grace Seitz. We are having a Lenten dinner and discussion uh, Tuesday evening, this, this Tuesday evening, March 26. Uh, the topic on the discussion is Melchizedek. If you'd like to know who Melchizedek is, please join us for our Lenten dinner and discussion. That is this Tuesday at 6 p.m. dinner starts. Choir practice Wednesday after Lenten service, I believe. We welcome those joining us via the internet and thank them for being with us this morning. There's much to read in the bulletin, IOCC Healthcare Health Kit Drive. Please follow the directions correctly. ACRY is sponsoring a Lenten soup sale, many Lenten retreats, a van to Monongahela. Details for these and much, much more are found in this week's Cathedral Jottings. There's a panahita this morning, although it was left out of the bulletin. There is a panahita this morning for John Chupka Sr., Nicholas, Don, and John P. Chupka, and Joseph Quinn, Margaret Herko, and newly departed Alfred Novak, and Cecilia Gresh, Herman, and Emma Jean Yazbek. We will have a procession of icons at this time. If you would like to join us in procession, please come now to the front. We will uh, stop at the corners and have a petition. And when we get back to the front, those in, those in procession with us, just line up across the front and we will read the Synodicon together facing the people. So we'll stop at the corners. If you want to join us for procession, please come now, line up and then we will go across the front, all the way across the front, and face. So Elijah, when you come back, stop in that corner. Everybody face the front. And the Sonodian on the here, so when you come passing by, please take one. Come now, please, join us.
for the protection of this holy city and every city from violence, pestilence, famine, and earthquake, flood and fire from the sword, from every enemy, civil strife, and sudden death, that our good God and loving God will be merciful and gracious. We and will hear the voice of our supplication of us sinners and will have mercy on us. We pray to you, hear us and have mercy. at the ends of the earth, or far away at sea, and show mercy, O Master, toward our sins, and have mercy on us. We are a merciful and loving God, and to you we give glory, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Together we will read the Synodicon of the Seventh Ecumenical Council. As the prophets beheld, as the apostles taught, as the church received, as the teachers dogmatized, as the universe agreed, as grace illumined, as the truth revealed, as falsehood passed away, as wisdom presented, as Christ awarded, Thus we declare, thus we assert, thus we proclaim Christ our true God and honor his saints in words, in writings, in thoughts, in sacrifices, in churches, in holy icons. On the one hand, worshiping and reverencing Christ as God and Lord, and on the other hand, honoring and venerating his saints as true servants of the same Lord. This is the faith of the apostles, this is the faith of the fathers. This is the faith of the orthodox. This is the faith which has established the universe. What God is greater than our God? It, miracles. Grant, O oh Lord, to your faithful servants gathered here this morning, peace, health, and long life for many happy and blessed
now and ever and forever. Amen. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. And ever and forever, Amen. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. Thank you. 